Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day I explore how technology is transforming our lives, our work, and indeed our world. Now, last year, you may remember I was fortunate to meet Gary Vaynerchuk in person and record not one, but two podcasts with him on completely different sides of the world. And after recording over 1,200 interviews on this podcast and probably listening to equally as many as that of Gary's content, I think it's easy to think that everything there is to know about Gary Vaynerchuk has been said. But having met him twice, I've seen a very different side of him. One that we don't get to hear about much because he is purposely very quiet about some of the good that he does out there. And I figured maybe he just likes to keep that stuff under wraps. And I respect that. But a few days ago, as part of TikTok's ongoing efforts to use the platform to make a positive impact, they partnered with Gary Vaynerchuk and Fanatics for a one of a kind 12 hour TikTok live stream and raised nearly 900,000 on that live stream alone. And when you add an additional 255,000 donation from Patriots owner Robert Kraft and the TikTok match, this means Meals on Wheels raised $2.3 million yesterday. So this sounded like the perfect opportunity to learn more about the other side of Gary Vaynerchuk and maybe bust a few myths and perceptions along the way about him too. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to the US so we can speak with Gary V right now. So Gary, you've just finished a 12-hour shift on TikTok. So how are you feeling right now? Exhausted or are you still buzzing? I'm still buzzing. You know, anytime you go and raise $2.3 million to feed the less fortunate during this time, you, you can't help but um, but feel great about it. So I, I feel sensational. It feels great. And uh, I'm humbled. I really appreciate TikTok's support on the matching the dollars front and promoting it within their app. Um, and, you know, going 12 hours straight with, with no food and, and bathroom breaks is a specialty of mine. So I, uh, it was fun to put those talents to uh, into play. Now, one of the things I love doing on this Daily Tech podcast is busting myths and perceptions. So I think it's fair to say that everyone listening will have read those provocative headlines about Gary V being declared as the, the guy that was, is going to buy the Jets one day, <laughs> and jab, 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 and right hook his way to success. But today, I want to hear more about the other side of you. And I'm talking about patience, kindness, humility, and giving back. So for all our international listeners, can you tell them a little bit more about what the All In Challenge is? Is and why it's so important to you. Sure. So the All In Challenge, allinchallenge.com, please check it out. Uh, was a was a concept started by Michael Rubin, the, the uh, founder of fanatics.com. And we kind of got a couple of uh, individuals together and started articulating this concept about auctions and experiences being auctioned off and raffled off and basically went out and <laughs> you know, gathered some of the most important people in sports and culture, music, entertainment, and created once in a lifetime opportunities to engage in dinners and golf matches and all sorts of speaking roles on movies and all sorts of crazy, incredible things. And, you know, as of this recording, we've raised over $50 million to feed uh, the hungry in the U.S. uh, through charities like Meals on Wheels and No Kid Left Behind and, and Feeding America. And, It's important because when you have the opportunity to give, you should, uh, if that's how you're fulfilled. And I'm one of those human beings and have been putting in an enormous amount of time over the last six, seven weeks with uh, me and my team and and the incredible people at Fanatics and Michael Rubin and Alan Tish and many others. And so Sunshine Sachs and many, many others. So just very excited to be a, a big piece of the team that went out and created this execution. And, you know, it's, it's, you know, I appreciate you bringing it up and, you know, I think people who've consumed my content know I can be quite boisterous and excitable and, and communicate with gusto. You know, my, my board membership on, you know, um, charity water and pencils of promise and kind of all the things I do for GoFundMes or private things I do for people is kind of a place where I'm a little more quiet. My giving back, you know, um, it's just, 
I don't know, just kind of a personal preference. I, I think, you know, I like communicating about the merit of winning on the business field, but I think, you know, pounding my chest and over um, communicating kind of my humanity feels a little bit more self-serving, ironically. And, um, and so I just, uh, yeah, I, I tend to stay quiet about those things. I, I was a little bit more out in front on this execution and, um, and it's been very fulfilling and, you know, it's so, something I'm very proud of of how I navigate the world. So I've got to ask, I mean, why did you choose TikTok for this 12-hour challenge? Is it because that's where all the attention is right now? It's one of the places where the attention is, and it's obviously growing rapidly pre-COVID and especially post-COVID or in COVID. That was more serendipity. I mean, the, the, there is, the, the truth is Nick Tran, one of the senior marketing executives, is a big reason why. Serendipity. You know, I could have had that conversation with Twitter or Facebook or what have you, but I think the, you know, the randomness of business conversations that I'm in every day led to one speaking about the live platform. I threw out the hyperbole of like, what if I went live for 12 hours? Would you guys support that? Um, it was something of interest for them. And, you know, it just kind of came together very nicely. And so the, the reality is, is that um, we uh, really were able to uh, put it together very quickly. They were nimble. Um, there wasn't a lot of red tape and we, uh, we executed and it was just very honestly, and this will make sense to everybody who's listening. A lot of things that happen in business and in life are the serendipity of the conversation. And this was, you know, the serendipity of a conversation with a senior TikTok marketing executive that built and built and built in a 24 hour window. And, you know, 96 hours later, I'm live for 12 straight hours. And you spoke to some big name celebrities and stars from all over the world there and some A-listers as well during your 12 hours on that challenge. But I've got to ask, I mean, what were the big highlights for you? I mean, definitely the results. You know, just yeah. again, when you go to sleep at midnight and you're just like, my God, I just spent a day entertaining, informing, throwing all my human energy against something and an enormous amount of human beings who are hungry are going to be fed because of it. It just the the humility rush is just so incredible and you know for you know everybody's wired differently but for me that feeling of gratitude that i'm in a position where i'm not on the receiving end but i'm on the giving end of something like that is very humbling um and intoxicating and uh and then just you know uh t you know it was fun i interviewed a bunch of tiktokers and got their kind of tiktok origin stories so it was fun because i knew a lot of people were watching so a lot of people got um got educated on best practices. I just thought there was a lot of good. Not only did we feed a lot of the unfortunate, but we also were able to create a conversation that I think is going to help certain people strategize, whether they're an A-list celebrity or a random high schooler in the middle of the country, to go out and become happier and more successful from fulfillment or financial or whatever they're looking for. And so it was very, very meta. There was a lot of helping going on across the board. And I, you know, love being the architect, conductor, maestro of something like that. And I know you're a big fan of repurposing content. So for anyone that actually missed the event, are you planning on repurposing any of that content? And, and for people that then do discover it a couple of days from now, a couple of weeks from now, how can they donate? They can go to allinchallenge.com. And I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to say that, Neil. And then, uh, and yes, of course. I mean, there was already four or five pieces of content. There'll be plenty of repurposing. I believe in DJing assets and content all the time. And so um, that's definitely the game. And something I always say at the end of every podcast episode I do is that technology works best when it brings people together. So I love how you've used technology to bring people together here and also make a difference, especially during this period of uncertainty. But what will you be taking away from this? That good is always good. Yeah. You know, I believe in it. I think I really appreciate the way you set this up. I'm not naive or tone deaf to, you know, a clipping here of me cursing. I'm definitely competitive and alpha and, and have plenty of confidence and, I'm not confused that some people may have a misperception of what, who and who, what I am, but I know who I am and I know how I navigate. And it's, uh, it's just so obvious to me that kindness breeds kindness, good breeds good. And, and I think the, you know, we need to be louder about positivity and I'm uh, very focused on that. 
Now, we have spoken, of course, twice last year, once in Vegas and another time in Armenia at tech conferences. And now here we are chatting on Zoom, which is which is now worth more than American Airlines, Expedia and the Hilton Group combined. It's been a crazy year so far, hasn't it? Life is crazy. You know, I think I always remind people like, you know, there have been far crazier events in this world wars, uh, pandemics that have wiped out the majority of the society, um, revolutions, genocides, you know, there's you know, natural disasters, the dinosaurs were chilling, having a good time here, you know, and then a comet hit. So like, you know, there is real stuff and that happens in life. And for a lot of people, um, this is the biggest real life thing that's happened. And we adjust, humans adjust. I mean, people lived under tunnels during world wars. So there's, there's, you know, for me, I'm most comfortable in having to adjust in recognizing that things will always change. And I'm very grateful for when times are good and I'm I'm equally grateful for when times are bad as long as, you know, the people I love are are healthy. And, um, and obviously I, uh, you know, I was very prepared for an economic meltdown because I thought a lot of things were in place that were not sustainable and never in my wildest dreams did it come in this form. But when I started hearing the rumblings, it wasn't something I was naive to either. I've, I've consumed plenty of conversations in certain circles around flus becoming a very dangerous thing. So it wasn't a shock. It was just a calibration of like, okay, this is going to be a thing. And, you know, listen, back to the two places where we met, you know, those are very substantial monetizable events for me when I'm keynoting conferences. So, you know, I I knew very quickly that I was going to have to take the gut punch of a massive financial hit from speaking. Um, And I also knew I had to navigate my own companies in the VaynerX world through this And so, and then on top of that, you know, I I felt the altruism coming through and that's how the all in challenge happened. And so, you know, we, we build as humans, we, we keep getting better and stronger and, um, and I'm super, uh, I'm super thrilled to have to be a wartime general for all my responsibilities during this time. And, and I'm up for that challenge. And there's a few things that really stand out from that last conversation I feel I must bring up. The first being, you were talking about the rise of audio and the importance of podcasts. And we got talking about Joe Rogan and how much attention he was getting. I don't know if you remember this. I think it was September last year. But you said to me, he's getting that much attention. It wouldn't surprise me if he signed a $100 million deal. And we all know what happened a couple of weeks ago. So you called another thing right there. Yes, I, I, I please, I, I would love for you and your producers to uh, clip out that part and join it here because that was one of my better predictions. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm paying attention. And I think over the last couple of years, I can tell that the market has recognized that I'm paying attention more than just being kind of loud and motivational. And so, yep, I'm paying attention. And that was obviously not a surprise for me considering that I felt that was going to happen and even had a good sense of how financially lucrative it was. And looking back at our history, I've learned that recessions can also be a catalyst for innovation. And we all need a little bit of good news right now. So how do you see that road ahead? Yeah. You know, yes. And I look forward to it. You know, I don't like the pain that comes along with the recession. Um, but these are macro things above my pay grade. I, I, I absolutely look, I, I'm, I'm excited for a lot of the good that comes out of recessions. People will actually get jobs they like. People will innovate. People will start businesses that take them into the next 60 years of their life. So there's a lot of good that can come out of bad. And, um, and a lot of, I think there's a lot of bad in passive times. And I think uh, a lot of bad behaviors were created financially and socially over the last decade that will get recorrected if there's a true sustained recession. And yeah, that's how I see it playing out. And finally, Gary, the one thing I'd love to bring up here was three months ago, most people were avoiding video calls at all costs. Now, of course, we've got grannies making Zoom calls and FaceTiming their grandkids every day. And as someone that's gone from living on planes and flying around the world to now Zooming from home, how have you found that experience? Tremendous. My travel will be down. My, my time in the office will be down. Being at home on, a, on video conferencing for 12 hours straight is a pleasure for me with my DNA, very efficient, and, uh, and will become a real meaningful part of my career. Fantastic. It's been an absolute pleasure as always, Gary. Hopefully meet you again in person one day, but more than anything, just a big thank you for dropping some of those value bombs and joining me again today. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon, my friend. So for those of you that missed it, please keep an eye out for Gary's repurposing of the content on whatever channel that you follow him, because 
Over 12 hours, Gary Vee had over 60 guests join his live TikTok telethon, including Howie Mandel, Paris Hilton, Hosier. There's an incredibly long list. I won't bore you with that. But but in the first hour and a half, Gary raised $100,000 and was not stopping by repeatedly asking the audience to share, tap the treasure chest and donate as much as possible. And I think Jay Strongbow donated 100000 and Will I Am donated $25,000 on that stream too. It was a huge event. And I also think it was a huge moment because I'm a man of a certain age and I remember telethons on the old TV screen. But here we are tuning in to a virtual platform and using technology to unite an audience all over the world to try and raise some money and ultimately make a difference. So I will add the links to the show notes so you can should be able to find everything you need, which will also be on the blog post over on my website, techblogwriter.co.uk, where you can also find the other two interviews we did, including the episode where Gary predicted that Joe Rogan will make a 100 million podcasting deal because that's where the attention is. He said that to me in September. I thought that's a little bit ambitious, but when I say we all know what happened next. And for everyone listening, thinking... How did this guy get to interview Gary Vaynerchuk? Not once, not twice, but three times. Well, let me tell you, this message is for you. My career started as a postman or a mailman, as my US friends would say. But I learned in my spare time and jumped to a career in IT. And then when I had that IT career, I built what I do now on the side. So it was a 25-year success story. But the point I'm trying to make here is for anybody listening out there, I did it and so can you. And I'm a firm believer, just like Gary, that kindness, humility, patience and hard work are the only tools that you need, along with the support from others. But before I get too sentimental on you all, I'm now going to turn the virtual microphone over to you. Let me know what you thought of Gary's TikTok telethon. Keep your questions coming in over to email. My email address is techblogwriter at outlook.com. Remember to visit the All In Challenge website too. But I have 59 interviews booked in between now and July, I think early July. So it's time for me to get out of here and prepare for the next guest, which will be here first thing bright and early tomorrow. So I'll see you there. Don't be late. But before I go, I just wanted to say a genuine thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.